Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to News Today. We are coming to you live from our studios in Kokom Limli on DTT because we're free to wear on the STV channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. We are your home of independent, fearless and credible journalism. This afternoon, female police officer crashed to death at a police checkpoint at Gomwa Dominase. We have details of the IGP's visit to that area. Also this afternoon, finance expert describes government's insistence on passage of e-levy as more political rather than economic, adding government's posture will erode gains made in its digitalization drive. Plus, Attorney General Godfrey Yabuadami worried many companies are evading taxes as government struggles to raise revenue. This afternoon, he's challenging Iyoko to go after big companies and organizations who evade taxes. This year. The finance minister and myself have resolved that there must be suspicion of, of big tax offenders. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Remember, we are streaming live on YouTube and all our social media handles at Joy News on TV. Tweet at us with the hashtag News Today. My personal handle is at the Nana Aisha. My Instagram handle, Aisha Joy News. And my YouTube account, Aisha TV. Please. Stay for details. Many thanks for choosing us. Uh, we begin with a female police officer who's been crushed to death at a police checkpoint at Gumwa Dominase. Inspector General of Police, Georgia Kufu Dampare, has been commiserating with bereaved family this morning in the central region. My colleague Richard Kwejonya, who's been following this for us, now joins us with more. Kojo, uh, tell me more about this incident. When did it happen? Bar, a pump car suspect of the road has been recording some uh, robbery incident of late and so uh, there have been a number of checkpoints that have been installed at various places so one of such points was at um, Gomua Dominas where uh, this 29 year old uh, Comfort Freddy uh, was stationed so around 3 a.m. Uh, this morning we were told that uh, she tried stopping a Toyota passenger's car, but the driver failed to stop and ran over the female police officer uh, who died instantly. The police have been chasing the said driver and they are yet to give us details whether they have got the driver arrested or not. So the IGP sent a delegation uh, to Gomua Dominance to come straight to the family. In fact, uh, the entire area has been thrown into a state of mourning. Uh, Co-tenants of this police Officer have been sharing, I mean, their moment uh, with the police officer, the fact that she left them to go uh, for work only for them to hear this uh, part or this sad story. And so that is what has been happening. Uh, the DCOP, Nathan Kofibuachi, has been addressing the family members and the people that have gathered in their house. And according to him, the police officer died in the line of duty, and the police administration would do everything possible to arrest the perpetrator um, involved in this incident and they will take the cost of the funeral arrangement as well. Uh, tell us more about this officer in question. Well, so she's a 29-year-old, uh, joined the police uh, service um, over a decade ago and so has been with the police uh, since um, the time. So um, that is what uh, she regularly uh, goes on some patrol duties at night and during the day and so it occurred that uh, this dawn or yesterday in the evening, she was assigned to go, and this unfortunate uh, thing happened. Uh, the husband uh, has been crying, wailing uncontrollably here. We are has been there. What has he been saying? Well, so the IGP uh, did not come, but sent a delegation uh, led by DCOP Nathan Kofibuachi and then the Director uh, General of Police Welfare uh, by DCOP Habiba Chumis Sapon. And uh, what they have been telling the people is that, well, it is God that gives and God that takes. And so they will take it that it is one of the hazards hazard of the job and they will do everything to protect their police officers. With our man in the central region will actually update you on this in a subsequent bulletin. Right now, uh, 
government is determined to push through the controversial e-levy despite stiff opposition from the public. President Ekofuado, in his recent comment on the subject described as needless, the disputations generated around the passage of the big chiefs. Uh, government, in order to, to, to keep the country going, had to incur uh, additional expenditures uh, for the free water, the free electricity, uh, the, 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 the provision of free food. Uh, these were in, uh, unavoidable expenses that government had to make. So the, the gap, the fiscal impact of what, what we had to do has been considerable. Uh, these are the efforts that we are now making, which are being resisted by uh, the opposition to us, to try and close the gap. It's necessary for us to do so, because uh, that is the only way in which foreign loans to keep our economy going. We ourselves will have to find the money for our development. And that is the reason why it's, it's become necessary for us to introduce these measures, like this famous tax, which is cause so much uh, unnecessary, in my view, uh, disputation. But nevertheless, we will continue. We will, um, I, I'm determined to persevere, to make sure that we find the means to address some of the issues that you have got. It cannot be done other than through uh, government. Government doesn't have any money on its own. It has money from the taxes of the people. There seemed to be a lot of push at the governmental level to get the bill through, with warnings coming from different sectors of their consequences if Ghanaians reject the bill. The Greek minister on his part is warning farmers will not get subsidies without the e-levy. Now, with the price increases on the world market, we are also facing problems. Get most of our uh, uh, revenues, government revenues, from international trade, import and export. That is why it's become necessary for this government to look for alternative sources of revenue to close the gap and hence the electronic levy. The opposition is making the electronic lobby, lobby, uh, levy a big issue. What they don't realize is that it's affecting other areas. So if we are to remove the levy, where are we going to find the money to give subsidies to the farmers? There will be nothing. Listen to Roads Minister, who also says without e levy, there will be no road construction. So, road construction, road projects will continue in earnest. And all this, we are hopeful that they even do more. So, the people of this country, the people of Tamale, all MPs in Tamale, you know, must support the passage of the e levy bill for more to be done you know, for them and their constituencies, their constituencies. Chief Executive Officer of the Public Sector Reforms, Thomas Kusibua, for on his part, practically is warning that without the e-levy, Ghanaians should forget about free SHS, among other things. Government is facing serious liquidity challenges. Revenue mobilization, our form, so that we abandon the programs we are pursuing. This is a fact I am telling you today. You can pay free education. Stop employing our children. Don't increase wages and salaries. Because you have to trigger the sucking of workers. Say the IMF for culture or no. What is here? And I will do so. And there will be no yield levy for anybody. There will be no rules for you. Schools will not be built. Listen to Deputy Finance Minister John Kuma on this. And so we need it. The year has already begun. You, you need those revenues to be able to spend. Uh, it's not for collateralization. It's, it's for um, um, government capacity to be able to spend. If you don't raise the revenue, you cannot spend. And once we have factored it into the revenue measures for the year, it means that we have to be able to have, you cannot pass an appropriation to go and spend with no revenue measures. So. Um, I don't agree with the opposition on that. An associate professor, Lord Mensah, has been speaking on this. He's with the uh, University of Ghana Business School. He's cautioned government on the passage of the bill because of its potential repercussions. Speaking on news decks, Professor Lord Mensah reiterated the need for government to broaden alternative sources of raking in revenue. Government will always show that you are desperation and uh, 
It's unfortunate uh, the, using the political muscle to run through this. I was reading that um, over three billion mobile, you know, shortage mobile uh, money I mean, transfers has shot on, on the e-platform. So these are some of the things uh, we may be likely to face um, if we go ahead to approve this uh, I mean, e But then we should also understand that um, the analog way of transferring cash is still in memory of our Ghanaian. Yeah. Um, we're not, we're not, we're not deep into this D platform to say that um, we are still at the infantile, you know, state. And uh, I can tell you that if we introduce this, you know, mobile money um, levy, and we end up putting it up a set, at a certain threshold. There's a tendency of not achieving all the investment we've done in the e platform that you know in the past. Remember, this, this administration can only post up you know digitization and all those. And the ultimate goal of it economically going forward. Yeah. Unfortunate thing is that if we keep on pressing, keep on pressing this, you know, e levy thing, and it goes through, we might end up you know uh, being in a situation where it will discourage people from using, you know, mobile money platforms for transactions. And in the end, uh, the benefit that we're supposed to reap, yeah. you know, I mean, when I say benefit, it's not, you know, short term, it's medium term. It's talking about long term benefit of the investment that we've done as a state, as a nation on this G platform. We might not reap it. I mean, so we have to be careful um, how we go about it. I will not advise the government. And they should really look into the, um, the itemized lines and the expenditure side of our budget. And they should be able to attend to the situation in the, in the, in the short term. The Attorney General and Minister for Justice, Godfrey Dame, uh, wants the Economic and Organized Crime Office to wage a war on big companies and corporations who default in tax payments as the government takes steps to raise more revenue. Several reports indict big corporations of not paying their fair share of taxes, and the Attorney General says he wants that fixed. And immediately, Godfrey Dame uh, taxed Iyoko to ensure that such defaulting companies are prosecuted. He spoke during a working visit to Ioko. This year, the finance minister and myself have resolved that there must be prosecution of, of big tax offenders. Because this district 110, district hospitals and all. We'll come to note if there is a failure to amass as much tax as possible or to mobilize as much tax as possible for the state. And that means widening the tax net. In order to widen the tax net, we ought to ensure that all those who are supposed to pay tax pay. And indeed, we, there, there have been instances where many of the big companies and the petroleum producing companies, oil companies, the mining companies and all, grossly understate their revenue. We think that there must be a stop put to that practice. And in accordance with your money tender at 804, I'll be counting on you for the investigation of big tax offenses. By the way, this year, we'll be very happy in of, of tax offenses by a very big oil firm. In the next few weeks, together with the Ghana Revenue Authority, um, we, we will form some partnership to ensure that certain offenses by some oil companies. Department is calling on government to, as a matter of urgency, appoint a board chair. Registrar General Jemima Wari explains the presence of a board chair would facilitate the smooth running of her office. The achievements of our departments are quite numerous. We've registered in total, as at last year, 120,500 industrial property rents. Our financial performance Last two years was not good at all. We were given a target of 111 million, approximately 112 million. We only made 64 million because at that time COVID was really seriously, you know, affecting every 11 million Ghana cities. Our target was about 116, and uh, so that was basically due to increased 
sensitization. I'm sure you saw me on a lot of <laughs> platforms and showing that people come and file their annual returns and renew their businesses. A major achievement we are we are going so far as to operationalize the office of the registrar of um, last year. We've already designed the logo for the new office. Um, we've designed our letterheads, file, files, um, gotten our box number, contact numbers, email, website, signage, seals, and paid for part of the land, cadastral plan, and all. So what is really outstanding now there is we have, we, without that, we can't set up and get off here. Yeah. The Attorney General pledged commitment in fast-tracking the appointment of a board chair and also to support activities of the Registrar General's department. Yes, the passage of the companies at, at 992 has actually uh, highlighted or emphasized the very important role of the Registrar General's outfit. And for me, this led to the establishment of a new office of the Registrar of Companies. And that set up, as we all know, as a body corporate responsible for the registration of all businesses in the country, from sole proprietorships to companies limited by liability. And I look at the office of registration as, as a speed up the operationalization of the office. Yes, the, in order to operationalize your office, the board, no doubt, is very fundamental. I must, I must indicate that I've taken a due step to ensure that the board is fully inaugurated as soon as possible. Let's now explore why many companies are defaulting in tax payment, even as government struggles to raise revenue for government business. I've been joined by William Kofiu Rusudamitia. He is a tax consultant and lecturer at the University of Ghana School of Law. Thanks so much, Doc, for making time for this interview. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon to Maya of having less people paying tax as government struggles to raise revenue. Uh, that, that, that is, a, as they call it, a multifaceted question. I think basically the problem we have in this part of the country uh, can be summed up in two broad fields. One, we need to identify the taxpayers and two, we need to be able to track their income. I think as far as taxpayer identification is concerned, the difficulty has always been with individuals. Because for companies, they are registered by the Registrar General's department and a taxpayer identification number is generated for them. Now, for individuals, we are doing well now by integrating the Ghana card with all forms of identification, getting a unique identifier for tax purposes. So we are doing well on that front. What we need to double up in is to be able to track the income and determine whether whatever the person is disclosing for tax purposes that will reduce the use of cash as far as transacting businesses or engaging in transactions are concerned. Mm. So you're talking about uh, making cash, I mean, cash, uh, improving on cashless transactions. Right now we're dealing with two issues. Those captured in the uh, tax net already and those who are not there and then there are those who are already there but are evading the tax. How do we move away from here? And again, with the uh, introduction of this e-levy, how do we you know, ensure all of this happen, especially when we have to do more cashless transactions? Thank you. A very loaded question. Let me try and break it down. Number one, for those who are already registered, there is a provision in the Revenue Administration Act 2016 at 915 that requires that whenever you are transacting with government agencies and setting identified institutions in the first schedule to the Act, you must indicate your taxpayer identification number. And so we need to enforce the law as far as that's concerned. So, for example, if I go to the Lands Commission to go and transact a business, the law requires that I indicate my taxpayer identification number. If I go to DBLA, the law requires that if I go to any metropolitan, municipal, and district assembly, if I deal with any financial institution, the law requires that I indicate my taxpayer identification number. Now, what that does is that it's able to link my taxpayer identification number to the transaction I'm engaging in. And those institutions are supposed to keep a record of the transactions I've entered into. And when the Commissioner General of Ghana Revenue Authority requests the law 
will make headway. Number two, if it comes to professionals, the law again in the Revenue Administration Act requires that a professional must have a tax clearance certificate before you can renew your practicing certificate. Now, for lawyers, for accountants, for doctors, for all regulated professional institutions in the country, we must enforce it strictly by ensuring that persons go to GRE and get a tax clearance certificate, which will show that at least they have fulfilled some tax obligation before they get to renew their practicing certificate. That, to me, will become a means by which we get people to comply. Number three, there are people who are not captured in the net at all, admittedly. Mm. And these are the people we need to double up in trying to get them to, as it were, commit or make a payment. The second schedule to it, it specifies what we call a modified taxation system. We have not implemented it since 2015 when the law was passed. We need to take steps to implement that so that those in the informal sector will get the opportunity to do what? To contribute to our tax revenue handle. As far as income taxes are concerned. Now, on the vast issue of the cash light economy and the issues that arise with e levy I think as a policy or as, uh, as a nation, we need to have a very deep conversation on this. What are the implications of people trying to walk away from, or what are the implications if we impose uh, an electronic transaction levy? Would it discourage people from using mobile money for us to track transactions? Because I always say that if I walk to a market and I purchase tubers of yarn and I pay the person cash of 20 CDs, the seller gets the 20 CDs, gets me the tubers of yarn, and I walk away. There is no record that you can audit to find out whether the, the seller actually re uh, recorded and declared the 20 Ghana CDs of revenue whenever the person is filing his or her return. And so it's always an issue of trying to get a trail and making sure that we are able to have that trail on an electronic platform so that if the person suppresses revenue or does not declare the right amount of revenue, we can go back to the trail and find out whether the person is under declaring revenue for tax purposes. These, I believe, are measures we can adopt to ensure that we are getting people to comply with their tax obligations. I'm grateful for your time, Kofi Uso Demitia. He's a tax consultant and lecturer, has admitted he had the Asin North MP, James Quasing, uh, after discovering that there were attempts by the MPP to restrain Mr. Quasing from being sworn in as Member of Parliament. He made the revelation in a joint news hotline documentary titled Ghana's Hung Parliament, a blessing or a curse. One funny thing, even the marriage decision, the uh, uh, what we call uh, the sin of didn't participate. Oh, it wasn't there? No, because I was hiding him. <laughs> I took seed of him, I took his phone, I put his phone off, I gave him a place where he could do everything, he could be given food and everything, but he's not supposed to be seen by anybody, not even outside. And only those who were in charge. I said that the leader of the one who is, was in charge of getting into the chamber was the only one who knew where he was. And me. That's it. You could be cited for contempt for obstructing the rule. No, no, no. Because if you're caught in Cape Coast, mm. he's looking for somebody to serve. They should look for him to serve. To serve him. He has his house right to the sea. Move and come. Because we have a lot of series of meetings. So in one of the meetings, I didn't even know him. In one of the meetings, they said, Who is. Honorable question. Then he said, okay, can, can you see me? So okay. Master, from now on, these are the instructions. Comfy is used in our homes to ward off insects and keep homes fresh. But do you know at certain levels it can cause diseases such as cataracts? However, a study carried out by KUSD scientists has revealed consumers of street vended fufu and fried rice may be suffering from ailments caused by the presence of camphor in their foods. This is after research found dangerous levels of camphor in these foods. Join us as medical reporter Dr. Neta Pastram speaks with the lead scientist, Dr. Gloria Mathanda Anka Brew of the Department of Food Science and Nutrition at KNUSD. Yes, camphor, I've been using it for a very long time. I use it in my room 
It gives a very good odor when you put it inside your room. It drives away insects like mosquitoes. Uh, mos is the main ingredient in camphor, which is commonly used by locals for water purification. Do you know it has several side effects? From skin irritations to gastrointestinal problems such as diarrhea, vomiting, nausea, and some neurological problems such as confusion and convulsions. Yes. Naphthalene, I'm sure we are all familiar with naphthalene. Naphthalene has it affects our eyes. It helps us even get cataracts on our eyes and helps us even go blind with age. The scientists found that the concentrations of camphor in hot pepper sauce and fried rice was as high as 6,500 milligrams per kilogram. The uh, polyaromatics that were heavy, that was mostly identified in all the researches that have followed later, we realized that naphthalene is also one of the highest deaths the deaths that are in it. So they use the aluminium ball, the, the naphthalene balls to sediment the death. And so by so doing, it, it, though it's, it, it's hydrophobic, it's, it doesn't dissolve easily, but it has a lower rate of dissolution. So slowly, after it's there for a very long time, by the time you realize it has dissolved completely in the water, and then we are adding more naphthalene balls. Naphthalene, if we can take naphthalene away from our waters and using them as pest repellent, we reduce that a lot. They also recommend the review of policies that govern. I'm back in the studio. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Now I feel uncomfortable anytime I see school children learning under weak structures. That's according to 94 year old Mrs. Alexina Ajakuju, who showed up at the premises of Joy FM to donate to support the multimedia classroom project, aided by one of his, her grandsons. Mrs. Kujo had just gone to withdraw her pension benefits and decided to stop by at Joy News to make her donation, both to a whole in heart patient and the classroom project. She spoke to project lead MFA Tiamwa Eli on her motivation to support the needy. Um, she is my granddaughter. Not to be able to get her blood. Okay. Yes. Okay. You are also donating to support. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is there anything you would want to say to anyone watching you and hears about these kind of news items in general? Mrs. Ajakujo is an ardent listener of Joy FM. She says, she, uh, she, she says a radio always her radio is always locked on to Joy ninety nine point seven FM, and she says she will not miss Joy News for anything. Shortly, business on Joy News today. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Asante Gold Corporation, owners of the Bibiani and Kubi Gold Mine in Ghana, have gone to the aid of victims of the recent explosion at Apiate with 160,000 Ghana cities worth of sanitary wares, building materials, and kids playing items. The company says the move is in furtherance of its corporate social responsibility and an answer to the needs of the people of Apiate. Now, team leader for the company, Nadia Abdul Aziz, said the incident should serve as a learning curve for all mining companies. Love FM's Erastus Asaridonko has more. Residents of Apieti continue to pick up the pieces from an incident that has left a lot of sad imprints on the minds of indigents there. 
touched by the plight of victims of the explosion, Asante Gold went to their aid. I hope that what we are given today goes a long way to make their lives easier. They donated water containers, refuse bins, bags of cement, roofing sheets, toiletries, footwear, footballs for the children and information center accessories. One of the directors of the company, Mrs. Nadia Abdulaziz, said the incident should serve as a learning curve for all mining companies. Unfortunately, it has happened. And as Ghanaians ourselves, we feel like it is our duty to come in and support our fellow Ghanaians if they've been found, if they found themselves in this kind of trouble. This shows that there's a lot to be done. You know, we are mining firm ourselves and uh, we are learning from this as well. And um, I hope that, you know, things are put in place to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Municipal Chief Executive for Pristia Huni Valley Municipality, Dr. Isaac Dasmani, said the incident has thrown the area's revenues of balance, calling for more of such assistance to get the affected on their feet. It has brought a lot of problems because we have just started the year and then we, the uh, revenue, we have just started our revenue mobilization that this incident happened. So the whole of last week, all oh, my men, we are even feeding them three times a day at the cost. I mean, it's, 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 other organizations came in to support, but the most of the time, majority of the cost is borne by the assembly. So we are just, I mean, uh, stressed up. We are just stressed up. So, but then we can also leave them like that. We need to continue to support them until they come back to life. So we can, you realize that even since we brought them here three days ago, they have started moving around, doing their own thing, preparing their own food and other things. So we are appealing, we are appealing to other organizations to render their support to ensure that at the end of the day, we give our brothers uh, and sisters and our brothers and uh, kids and then a defeating life. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus Asaridonko, Kumasi. Well, more help for the people of Apia Tepu, Macedo Ghana Limited has presented several of its products worth over 70,000 Ghana help. It wants the relevant state institutions to put in place concrete measures to help prevent such disaster from happening ever again. There is more in the following report. Victims of the Apiati explosion were relocated to their temporary residence at the Dumasi resettlement site. Several institutions and well wishers have been presenting several items of various forms to the inhabitants. Promacida Ghana Limited on Tuesday, February 1st, also visited the victims to commensurate with them. They also used the opportunity to present several of their products worth 70,000 Ghana cities to the victims to help make their stay comfortable. The company presented boxes of Carbell, Mixi, Onga, Yamvita, branded bowls and other kitchen accessories. Head of events and PR for Promasdo Ghana Limited. That incident that occurred on the 20th of um, January, which was the explosion that occurred at Apiate. And as a business that's been working with the community, and we thought it's, it's very important, and also given the kind of food products that uh, we produce, it's important that we make the first move of presenting these items uh, as relief items to the victims of the explosion. Then again, I mean, it's just to, to, to state that what we are doing over here is make this presentation, which is intended for uh, the camp whilst we explore uh, what exactly needs to be done to support the fund that has been set up for uh, the resettlement and also dealing with the issue from a national level. So these are items that we have presented and uh, we are glad the MC together with uh, the traditional leaders and also some of the community members uh, have welcomed it. While pledging that the company and work to ensure that such disasters are prevented from happening anywhere in the country. Let's just establish the fact that this is a very sad time, you know, uh, for the incident that occurred. and. Uh, the discussion as we've all heard from different uh, stakeholders, media platform, is to make sure that in, as we go on in the future, issues of this nature do not repeat itself. And that's when the issue of regulation comes in. And, uh, but 
yes we are we are happy we are in the position to support but we really would have wished nothing like this happened because i mean there are lives that have been lost i mean there are victims that have been displaced i tell you for a fact there are people who are going to start their life all over again and that's that's a very difficult uh, experience one to uh, have incidents of this, this this nature receiving the items pristia honey valley municipal chief executive dr isaac dasmani said the gestures from promacido ghana limited could not have come at any better time uh, to express my sincere gratitude to promacido on behalf of the nanano and the people of apiati for this kind donation uh, if you look at the items that have been donated by Promacido, in fact, they are quite impressive. And you know, since this incident happened, a lot of people have come here with items and various forms, given their relationship and the kind of uh, that we have established with them. Uh, these items that they've seen here, we are going to make sure that we give it, we distribute to the children, the mothers, and then the, those who actually need. And I want to assure them that the items that they have donated are going to be used. For intended purpose. The chiefs and people of Apiate applauded Promacido Ghana Limited for the presentation. For Joy News in Athalia Kwanza, Apiate. And we've got the day's latest business headlines on the marketplace at the top. Let's do sports now on Joy News today with me, Muftar Nabila Abdullah, Executive Council Member of the Ghana Football Association. Dr. Tony Urban has thrown more light on why the football governing body prefers Dortmund assistant coach and scout Otto Addo as Black Stars head coach. Government is keen to hand Chris Hilton the coaching role to replace Milovan Rivac, who was sacked last week. Dr. Urban says they cannot fight the government over the choice of a coach, but Otto Addo is the best fit for the job in the current circumstances. What, what, I, what I mean, first, my position is that the Black Stars need a coach. Whether the code is from Amru. So, so I, I guess like, I guess the question I was asking is, looking at the criteria you just laid out and all the the need to know the players, as we speak right now, is the reason why the GFA executives are in are in Germany and they believe Otuado meets ticks these boxes for now. It it comes as obvious. Meanwhile, Carfas rejected the GFA's decision to move the World Cup qualifier playoff against Nigeria to the Bawayara Sports Stadium, stating that the request is out of the three months window required to request a venue change. Now let's do the African Cup of Nations semi-final tie that will happen later tonight. The Lions were losing finalists in the last edition of the tournament in 2019 and is bent on righting the wrongs this time around. Prepared for the game. Even if we didn't have a lot of time to do so, we spent a lot of time uh, catching our breath after playing so hard. As you said, the Burkina Bay team is a very reliable team. We played against them for the qualifiers for the World Cup, like back, at, back in 2019. I think the game was a very heated game. I think we played a zero-all tie at home and eventually we lost in Burkina Faso. The team changed uh, in the course of time. Today we have Koli who is playing in the major axis. We have uh, Traoré, Banse. There's a new generation of players that has come up and they are quite promising and the Kamu does well. We need to commend him since he got into this team. He has been performing well. We're going to play this semi-final game and we we're working so hard to make sure that everything goes well. We are expecting to have a very challenging game. Good afternoon. You all heard the speech like I did. It is speech, it's a speech which requested of us a lot of concentration. We played a good game. We won. And we scored some goals. That was our objective. And that game's happen later tonight. Burkina Faso versus Senegal, the first semi-final of the African Cup of Nations. That is your sports for now. Enjoy news today with me, Muftar Nabila Abla. But you can head on to myjoyonline.com and read some more sports stories. <laughs>
And I thought we'd wrap up news today. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Many thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of our programs. <laughs>